So, I have assembled the cable made out of the insides of the wire that I stripped down and I joined it together. You can see here is the join point. It's actually very rough and probably a little too bulky. Well, actually, I know it's a little too bulky. So, I'll just say that now and I put it up. I have these uh, plumbing supplies that I picked up at our good old hardware store and I have also filed down or sanded down um, using just a block sander a little bit of the gear so that it will be more likely to engage. So the idea is that when it turns up the um, link would slide, be more likely to slide down. And here again, when it's turning over here, it would be more likely to slide over. So that is the first attempt. And if you look at it, you'll see, well, the concept works, but obviously the implementation's a little bit um, it doesn't work quite well. And here you'll see turning this one does cause that to turn. I have a couple of things happening here. The bulkiness of this fiber uh, just causes a bit of a problem. Also, this direction is the tightening direction for this um, screw here. And it is also tightening the, um, well, maybe not, because now it's loose. Oh, there we go. So, <laughs> obviously, it was having a problem with the um, nut. I probably need to um, go back again, the bolt, go back again and take a look at that and see what else we could put here if that might be useful. And there we are. But there are a couple of other things I'm going to do. Make a new wire, one that's thinner. I don't need quite as much fiber as this here. Um, I'm going to file these down in this direction, sand them here and here to make them more point-like. And obviously I need to replace this solution. Good. Okay, so when I finally figured out that the sander needed to have sandpaper on it, I was able to pretty well get the teeth sanded down. And I think I'm ready to try it again. Okay, so here we are again with the gears, and there have been quite a few changes. The chain that we have here is much thinner. It's about half the size it used as many fewer fibers. And the tips of the wooden gears have been filed down so that they come to a point, or close to a point, so that when you turn the gear, the driver, it will, um, the point will cause the chain to engage. So there we go. Now, it's still a little um, stiff, and the, um, I added increased tension here. The um, gear has been moved down and I was just trying to get it a little bit tighter. Um, but what that also does is it, um, it makes it a little stiffer. So be that as it may. Still possible. And yeah, I'm considering that part close to being done. All right. So now that we've seen what we can do with the fibers, you might ask, well, where do I get these cool fibers to work with? I had done some extraction of wire before, and I can't seem to find my sample, but uh, just know that I did. And so I knew that um, I could get a fair amount coming out of some of these wires. I couldn't remember the kind of wire that I'd used. So I tried sampling a few different wires. I had a mouse, I had a power adapter, I had some old, uh, non-working uh, Christmas lights, 
I picked up some old cabling and um, this is part of an old extension cord. So I, I'll tell you now that the one that I ended up using was came from this. This was two wires. Each one um, was shielded and had a fair number of um, wires in it. So, but I came to that after I poked around in some of these other wires. So here is the one that was a Christmas tree wire. And that is pretty good, uh, not quite as many fibers as the extension cord because, well, the number of fibers, the amount of copper in the wire will depend on how much current it's needing to carry. So here again, this one looks like it's from the power adapter and it has a fair number of fibers in it. So I was pretty much going by fiber count and um, so from the reuse perspective you probably don't want to uh, use ones from power adapters because honestly by cutting it off, cutting the wire off, you're destroying sort of a greater use. Um, here though I would say Christmas tree lights, um, Christmas lights once they're done, I don't see people really reusing these, so it's probably okay to strip these wires down. And again, if you have a broken extension cord, I would say go for it. Um, an old mouse, well, it depends on if it's working or not. Um, maybe, maybe not. Some wires are actually um, composites of multiple wires. So, for instance, this uh, Cat5 wire is carrying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different individual wires. And you might find it interesting to use the color of the shielding in your um, thing that you're weaving. Perhaps you could make a cool little handbag out of it or a coaster. Uh, but from the perspective of trying to extract the copper, each one of these has such a teeny tiny fiber in it, you probably don't want to spend your time doing that. Okay, that all said, I will head to how to extract the copper from the wire. Now, you might think that that's a no-brainer, you just get a wire stripper. I had a fair amount of difficulty trying to figure out how to do this. First of all, I couldn't find my wire strippers, so I used um, pliers, and I gingerly cut it so that I would um, cut just through the shielding and try to avoid the copper. That worked most of the time, but not all the time, and then I would pull the pieces down along the length of the copper. So when you think about what that is, it's actually adding some tension to each of the fibers. Inevitably, some of the copper fibers would come with the shielding as I pulled it off. So that ended up being a tangled mess at the end and not very um, good for maintaining the copper. So um, I shifted my um, tool set to use a um, a wire stripper, but really when you think about it, the wire stripper had exactly the same problem. It could cut the shielding just to the point that you needed it, but it still you still needed to drag the shielding down into the end, and we're trying to maintain the copper fibers as intact as we can. So that was not good. So, how did you do it, you might ask. And if the answer is actually very simple, and you probably already have this tool in your bathroom. And really, all you do, and it works out pretty well. So I'll tell you a few things about that as I show you. Try to do this with one hand. So you basically just slip the pointy end of the uh, nail scissors into the shielding here and you clip it and just go down enough so that you can then 
pull the fibers out this way and expose an end of the shielding here. And then tug. And if you're lucky, the fibers will um, put enough pressure on the shielding and will actually act like a knife. And I was able to get one that was um, two feet in length before it broke. And then you just do it again. And that, sometimes you get two inches, sometimes you get two feet. Um, most of the time you get two or three inches. So, hey, it's a little bit of effort, but you can plan on the copper being mostly intact, So, which is the goal. And that's how you do it. The next thing you would probably want to know is, well, now that you've got your copper, how do you weave it? So that's pretty simple. I was going for a bicycle chain. So I basically just uh, took these and twisted them. Um, what that does is the fibers then act as a whole rather than as individual units so that, for instance, if the chain flexes in one way or the other, they're all going in the right direction, in the same direction. So twist it like this. Now if you want to double it up, which is what I did the first time, you twist it like this, and then you twist another one like this, and then you twist them both together. So that's sort of plying of a copper, I guess you would call it. Um, what I did is, and I'm going to fold this over so that I can demonstrate, I was trying to make sure that I had something that wouldn't separate when tugged on. So I actually um, folded my fibers across and exchanged sides with them. I don't know if you understand what that is. So for instance, this would become the cross piece in the chain. And then here you'd have the next link. That's basically what I did. And this again is very raw. You just twist it a few more times. Um, and if you want, my gears were one inch in length, and I believe it was a half inch in um, thickness. So what I did, I found that a Jenga block was the perfect size. So um, my first uh, chain that I wove was sort of variable because I would sort of measure and then fold back and so say, well, that's good enough. But with the Jenga block, I could stick it in and tug on it and actually get edges that I could then sort of be more confident that I had um, a one inch by, I don't know if it's a half inch or three quarter inch in width. So, um, so that seemed to work pretty well. Okay.